morning, everybody, and welcome to North Congregational Church on this June 13th, 2021. This is the very first of our hybrid services, and we are so thrilled to have people back live in person here in the sanctuary. And we are also pleased for all of the folks who may be joining us online on Facebook Live or watching this service later. So we will go through our service today. You have your bulletins and we'll have pieces to share, pieces to sing, and you may remove your masks for communion, but otherwise please leave them on even to sing, and that way we can remain safe. Right now we're going to hear the prelude from Pat Butler. Thank you, Pat. We have come into God's sanctuary. We have come into God's presence. Wherever we are, God is with us. And wherever we go, God's spirit will go with us so that we may love and serve. Now we call upon God's spirit to be with us as we worship. Good morning. Please join with me in the reading of the invocation in Lord's Prayer. O oh, loving God, we thank you that we can come together in the name of Christ to worship you and to find strength to go forth in service. Be present with all of us, those gathered here and those watching from afar, as we join joyfully in prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory and the power forever. Amen. Amen. 
we're going to have a hymn. I thought it was time for some resurrection since we didn't have it at Easter, and so I invite you to stand now and let's join together in singing the hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. It is printed in your bulletin. A good reminder for us all that we celebrate Easter every Sunday on the morning of the first day of the week, just as the women found the tomb empty. And so now, in that spirit of being Easter people, let us pray. O oh, loving God, you have come among us in the person of Jesus. You have lived with us, you have shared the lives that we live. You have shared our being, and you have shared yourself with us in that way. Your love runs through us like sap through a vine, and we are all connected in your love. And so, in the name of your love, we give thanks that we may come together in so many different ways, in so many different places, but especially that we may come together with the people we love and understand the preciousness of each life that we encounter. We pray this day for all those lives of all your people on earth. We pray for the people who are in places of danger and warfare, of environmental disaster, for those who are refugees, for those who are displaced persons. Oh God, help them to recover from these difficulties. Show your people both your love 
in your care for their spirits and your love in the ways that we may care for them. We pray for your people this day who are sick. In a time of global pandemic, we think about this more than ever. And yet there are many who are sick in other ways. And so we pray that health may come. We pray that wholeness may be experienced even when health does not come. We pray for the people who are living with chronic conditions, for those who are suffering from something from which they will heal. We pray for those who are undergoing tests and awaiting results. We, wait, we pray for those who are waiting to see if all of the interventions work. We pray for those for whom health will not come, that they may still be whole and understand that they are beloved by you. And so, O oh God, hear those prayers that we pray also for those who are dying and those who remember the people who have passed out of this life, both a long time ago and most recently. O oh God, when we miss them, comfort us and remind us that they are with you in glory. And that meanwhile, our lives have been enriched by the lives of those who have gone before us. We pray for your church this day, that we may truly help the poor, the helpless, the homeless, the hopeless, the hungry, as Jesus commanded. We pray for our community of North Congregational Church, that we may maintain fellowship even as we meet both in person and virtually, that we may truly be salt and light in this world, that we may live as your gathered people. And we pray for ourselves, O oh God. We pray that we may have compassion for others and compassion for ourselves. Hear the prayers we lift for your compassion and for self-compassion as we wait on your spirit in a time of silence. O oh God of all of our times, of all of our days, of all of our lives, your steadfast love endures forever. You hear our prayers and respond. You lift us up when we are down. You are with us even when we don't realize it. And so, O oh God, we give you thanks for this day, for this company of people gathered in different ways, for the beauty of this world on a late spring day, for the beauty of the people with whom we share this life. Help us to bear your image, to see one another as made in your image, to understand the beauty and the worth of each person, Lift us up in grace and reconciliation and compassion so that we may live as your people in this world this day and every day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One moment, check our difficulties.
Our scripture reading this morning is from John, book 15, verses, sorry, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11, and the translation comes from the Common English Bible. I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch cannot produce fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Likewise, you cannot produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you cannot do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up and thrown into a fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit and in this way prove that you are my disciples. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is the word of God for the people of God. This has been a uh, day of firsts in a long time, I think, for all of us. And it is such a pleasure to look out and see you, and I, I look forward deeply to the day, I hope not too long, when I can see your whole faces. And um, I look into my camera and say, I am so glad to see uh, the 16 people who are tuned in at the moment, 16 screens that are tuned in at the moment watching us online and also those who will watch us later, as I know many do. We've been apart. We've been apart for a long time. We've been apart and feeling the pain of being apart for more than a year. Who knew when we last were in this sanctuary that that would be the last time for so long? Who could have imagined it? And we've gone through a lot. We have lost friends. We have watched things change around us. And we've wondered, how can we possibly come together again? How can we be together? People have used the expression back to normal, but what even is normal anymore? What will be our normal? We've struggled to have heart. We've struggled to feel connected. I've seen many of you on Zoom, in coffee hours, in meetings, and other things. Others have not been online with us and are now here in the sanctuary, and I'm so, so happy to see you. This is not the first time that God's people have struggled to feel connected. Think about the exile. Think about even the time of Jesus, when people were spread out, when they had no way to communicate, when forces were working against the early church to keep them from communicating. And on through history, there have been other times. And so today, as we come together, I wanted to be sure to share some good news with you, because we are good news people. We are always connected. We are always connected to God, and we are always connected to one another. God in Christ, Emmanuel, the one we sang about at Christmas, the one we welcomed, came among us to live as one of us, and came among us to be the vine that came in, into being in Christ, as Jesus said. I am the vine, you are the branches. That means that we are all branches of God. We are all already attached to God. The sap of God's love is running through us, is invigorating us, is giving us the ability to do things, to love. So we are already and always connected to God, and God has done that. God is always doing that. God does not need to be sought out. God is not hiding from us. God is not 
waiting to judge us. God is moving within us and through us as the Holy Spirit, as this spirit of, of love. And our work is to recognize this presence, is to recognize our branchness, and then to let it flower out, to bear fruit of love out into the world. <clears throat> but there is more than just that, as good as that news is. All those branches, all the ones that the vineyard owner prunes and tends and lifts up carefully. If you've ever seen grapes being grown, you know they don't just sort of drag around. They're carefully put on branches. They're spread out like this so that the grapes may hang, so that the fruit may be born. They're carefully tended. Extra little shoots, things that are going in the wrong direction are taken off. Dead branches are taken away so that they will not obstruct the new things. This is what the vineyard worker does with us, shares with us the tender care of putting our branches up, of lifting us up, of nurturing us, of nourishing us, and we are all connected to that vine. We are all receiving that care, which means that we are also in many ways connected to one another, that we are all part of one thing. We are one with Christ and we are one in Christ too. That same sap of love is nurturing everyone. It's running through us all. The ones who are like us and the ones who are not. The rich and the poor, the sick and the healthy. The people we disagree with. The people we aren't very sure that we want to like. We are all connected in God's being. And part of our being is therefore shared and available with everyone else. Now that's kind of hard to know in the world out in which we live because our human transactionalness, our human spirits always want to create lines of difference. We want to separate from one another. We want to say, I am this and you are that. We somehow need to define ourselves against each other instead of with each other. With each other. But now we have an opportunity, my friends. As we come out of this time of pandemic, as we begin to choose again how we will live, what we will do, how we will be in the world, we have time to choose to see ourselves as one with everyone, as branches filled with God's sap of love, as branches bearing the fruit of God's love that is freely given, not earned, not deserved, not conditional, not ending ever. And we are called to bear, <clears throat> called all to bear the fruit of reconciliation. As the branches, we are more alike than different. We are much more alike than different. We are like all people, and our differences are really small, even when we make a big deal out of them. And so we need to learn to look upon one another with kindness, realizing that everyone we meet right now is probably doing about as well as they can, that everybody is putting about as much effort as they have available to them into trying to get through each day. And we are invited to judge them instead of with condemnation, to judge as God does, with love, the same way that we want God to judge us with love. Now, in just a few moments, we will share communion. Those who are here will have bread and grape juice, and those of you online will want to take a few moments, in just a minute, to get together some kind of bread, some kind of beverage. We have been doing this for more than a year, or so it will be familiar and yet new because we're doing it in this new way. But one thing has never changed. We have no restrictions on who can share communion with us. We have no restrictions at North Church. Let your faith be your guide. Let God nourish you. Take this communion not because you deserve it, but because God freely offers it to you. And let that sap of love flow through you and among you through the whole vine, the vine that is here and the vine that is reaching out through the internet to everyone. Christ came so that we might have life, so that we may have life more abundantly. And as we emerge from this time of unseen death, of pandemic and separation, what will abundant life look like for you? This is going to be a work in progress for all of us. I don't know quite yet what abundant life will look like for me, so I know that we are, are together in this quest. But how can we live more abundantly? How can we live out this truth? How can we care for one another more tenderly? When people were asked during this pandemic what they missed most, it was always people 
I want to have lunch with my friends. I want to get together with my family. I want to hug my grandkids. I want to be able to smile at someone on the street. Let's not forget this. Let's remember that this is God's desire for us. This abundant life is shared life, a life shared in love. So hold that in your heart and come to the table now where all are welcome and all are filled. Now I needed a moment of transition, which I forgot when I put together this service. And so in just a moment, I'm going to invite us. I did warn Pat. Did you get warned? We're going to sing three verses of Let Us Break Bread together. And you don't have the words. You don't have the words. You know those words. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. And I will help you through each of those parts while I take my computer audience down to the communion table and while we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. And then you have a blessing that we will be reading together, so be sure to keep your bulletin handy. All right, let us break bread together. What a beautiful thing it is when God's people all can sing together. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women, youth and children, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather around Christ's table. Come from wherever you are. Come if you are a member of this church, of any other church, or of no church at all. Let your faith be your guide. In Luke's Gospel, we read, that after his resurrection, Jesus was sharing a meal with the disciples. He took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. In the company with all believers in every time and beyond time, we come to this table to recognize the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after dinner, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. When you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and his resurrection until he comes again. Let us join together in the blessing, which is printed in your bulletin. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gives us this food, the fruit of the earth and of the vine, and the work of human hands. Come, Lord, bless this bread and this cup. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may go into the world as the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Send your spirit to us as we do this in your name. Your bounty and mercy never end. Your love will never fail. You have always been our hope. Amen. We will receive the communion elements where we sit, and we will be served by our diaconal friends. As we are passed by, you will take your baggie of bread. We're trying to be social distanced here. If you need gluten-free, please let your server know. We do have that option. When we break this bread and eat it individually as we are served it, we share the life of Christ, the body of our Lord, and the bread of life. As we take the cup, as we take this cup and drink it together, we will receive it as an outward sign of an inward grace, the grace that moves amongst us all, the grace that moves like the sap from the vine into the branches, the cup of the new and everlasting covenant. And as a symbol of our unity in Christ, we will receive the cup and then hold it until all are served, and then we will drink it together.
Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you have refreshed us at your table. Through your healing power and gift of love, we receive the power of your spirit. We look for your presence to strengthen us through this gift. Open our hearts and minds to your ways so that we may love one another as you love us. With these gifts of faith and hope and love, truly your kingdom shall have no end. Through the guidance of your Holy Spirit, we seek in all our lives at all times to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you now to join in two verses of the communion hymn, Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread, and we will have closing words, benediction, and postlude. The streaming service will end after the postlude, Just for those of you following online. Thank you one and all for your patience as we try new things and new ways, as we begin to understand how we can go out into all the world in the name of Christ. And so after the postlude, you will be dismissed by the ushers from here in the sanctuary, and we look forward to seeing you again next week when we will think about Psalm 23 and God the Good Shepherd. And now go forth into the world in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Love and serve God with gladness and singleness of heart, walking in the pathways of Jesus and rejoicing in the power of the Spirit this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.